What is up, y'all? Odeet here once again, AKA Big Jake, and it has now been three years since I've had my Lang 36. So I figured since it's the three year anniversary, I would kind of go over my thoughts on the unit now that I've really had a chance to use it uh, and kind of go over like my pros and cons of it and then give you guys some tips and tricks uh, to not only keep it clean, but how to repaint it if you need to touch up any paint and uh, just little tips and tricks that I use as far as when I'm cooking on it. So let's get the video started. So this is what it looks like after having it for three years. By the way, I should mention that I keep it inside of the garage just to kind of keep it away from the elements so that it does stay looking really nice. And uh, one thing that I do is about every three months or so, I will wipe it down with food grade mineral oil, which is what I have here. I bought this stuff off of Amazon. I will put a link in the description below if you want to buy some. Basically take this stuff, wipe it onto a rag, and then you can wipe down the outside of the unit and uh, get it looking nice and clean like this. By the way, what I normally do first is kind of wipe it down and get all of the dust off of it, stuff like that, um, and then put the mineral oil on. It's kind of like a finishing coat, um, and it just gives it like a really nice shine. One thing to note though is I don't really put it on the firebox because when you put it on the firebox, all it kind of does when you start your uh, unit up again is it just burns off the firebox because uh, the firebox gets so hot. So I only use the food grade mineral oil uh, on the main smoking chamber here, on the legs, on the chimney, and on the handles. Another thing I recommend is getting yourself some touch-up paint um, because sometimes like on these handles here and other little areas um, the paint will kind of rub off or like if you ding it on something um, you can repaint it and I definitely will say the firebox too. Um, it's nice to give it like a thin coat every once in a while just to kind of keep it looking nice and uh, this is actually the paint that I got from the guy who dropped the Lang off uh, when I bought it. This is Sumter paint uh, ready spray high heat aerosol black and this is the number here and you can actually call Sumter and they will uh, sell you a case of this and you can just pay for shipping and they'll ship it to your door if you want it if your firebox starts looking really rough you can just paint the whole like spray the whole firebox down with this stuff and it work, works really well uh, and it keeps the unit from rusting also let me add real quick that this is an exact match to the paint that is on the unit. Uh, I know that they sell like uh, engine paint and uh, barbecue high heat paint at places like Lowe's and stuff like that, but I've bought it and it does not match the smoker exactly. So if you use, so if you use the other paint, you will have like a uh, mismatched looking smoker. So this stuff dries to look exactly like the paint that's on the smoker. All right, now let's go into the design itself as far as how it's holding up. Uh, one thing I will note is that these kind of got loose, the handles, um, and you can kind of position that like that, but a lot of times it'll fall, and this used to kind of just stay on its own. Not a huge issue, but if you're in a hurry, um, you know, you make sure you lift this up and then put it down, because if you don't, it'll swing down and slam on there, and then you'll need that paint. This one sometimes stays up on its own, but sometimes it just drops. Might, be, might depend on like how hot or cold it is outside and if the metal's expanded or not. Maybe once the metal expands and it's hot, uh, this gets a little looser. Um, I have heard of people basically taking like a hammer and a, and a pin and on the inside like hammering onto this, uh, this bolt here and it kind of tightens it up. So you could try that. Um, I mean at this point, to be honest, I'm kind of just nitpicking. Um, I just put this down like this, it's not that big of a deal, but I thought I would note that uh, these do kind of get loose after time. One other thing that I will kind of uh, mention is that uh, up here where the um, pins are on the door, this is kind of crooked. Um, so when you open this, so see it kind of rubs right here and then it's rubbed the paint off. And uh, I've repainted it, but it just keeps kind of rubbing it again. Which again, for me, not a huge issue because I keep my unit inside. Uh, but if I was keeping it outside in the elements, I'd probably eventually get some rust here. Uh, this one has a little bit as well. Um, but again, for me, this is not a huge issue. Right now, I'm kind of just um, almost doing like nitpicking issues, but honestly, this kind of stuff is um, kind of irrelevant to me, but I know to some people this might be a big deal, so I figured I'd just point it out. And yeah, honestly, other than that, I have had zero issues with any of the, like, the design on it or anything like that. Um, for me, it's really worked perfectly. So now we can kind of go into like the inside of the unit um, and there's like a big kind of question that some people ask, uh, once you're done cooking and the unit is still hot, should I spray it down in order to get like a nice steam clean on the inside? 
I personally do it. But I will say when I do it, I do it for about three seconds only. I basically use the garden hose, spray down in here, and then close the lid uh, and let it steam. That way it kind of like sterilizes the inside of the unit and a lot of the uh, bigger like debris, like pieces of meat and stuff like that will, uh, will fall off of the grates. Now some people mentioned that they've had problems with like cracking or pinging on the inside when they use uh, water on it. I have not personally seen that, but like I said, I, I hose it down really fast, probably three seconds max, um, and then that's about it, just to avoid any kind of cracking or anything like that. I'll also say I really like the design of the shelves here, um, and they're actually fairly easy to clean. Once I've done my steam cleaning and then the unit is completely like kind of cooled down, uh, I can come in and I'll basically use a wire brush on the top of the grate here um, and then just take like a dirty rag and you can kind of get the edges and then also you'll have grease kind of collect in here on these bars and you can just take a rag or like a towel and uh, wipe it down and then if you have any kind of like stubborn thick like grease or debris that won't come off uh, I just bought like a painting painter scraper basically and just kind of like you know you can scrape any of the debris off all right, I'm gonna briefly go into fire management on this thing. I have another more detailed video that talks about fire management on my 36. I will put a link in the description down below if you wanna check that out. But just real quick, I run my dampers completely open all the way. I run the stack all the way open and then I control the temp with the size of my fire. I usually start my fire with a bed of charcoal and then once it burns down, I will use very small splits like this. Uh, you usually put them on about every 30 minutes. Now some people have talked about or asked uh, or stated that the top rack runs much hotter than the bottom. My personal experience, if you run the dampers wide open and you run a uh, hot but small and clean fire, uh, I usually am five degrees left to right and 10, 15 degrees top to bottom. And with that little of a difference, my food usually finishes up all at the same time without rotating anything. Uh, for example, I'll do three racks of ribs on the bottom, three on the top, and they pretty much finish up at the same time. Now, if you start pulling your pinwheels back like this and creating a huge fire in there um, that's gonna burn slowly and restrict airflow, then yeah, you're gonna have hot spots and things of that nature inside of the unit. So it really just depends on how you run your fire. So I think the final thing I will really say is that because of the reverse flow design in that plate in there, your food cooks a lot quicker. So basically you have heat radiating off of this plate here, heat coming over the top of your meat. So you're kind of getting heat from both areas and your food will cook a lot faster and the hotter you cook, the faster your food will cook. I will also say with this plate, because the fat renders off and hits this grease and then sizzles up onto the meat, it gives your meat like this extra nice, almost like a uh, griddle cooked flavor. Um, it's really good, it's really delicious. I really like it. I will also say, and I don't know if this is just laying itself, but the color of the food that you get on this thing is amazing. All right, so that's really all I can think of for now. Um, and I guess my final thought on this whole thing is, would I buy the Lang 36 again? And the answer to that is absolutely. I know some people uh, say, oh, I should have got a bigger size, um, you know, or when people are buying it, they always say, uh, buy a bigger size, you're gonna want a bigger size. For me, uh, this has worked fine. I think I've uh, cooked on it and, you know, fed 30 people maybe, probably even more. Um, so for me, it's a perfect size. If you want a bigger size, obviously Lang, makes bigger sizes so you know go one size up if you feel like you need to but for backyard barbecuing or front porch barbecuing as i'm doing uh this thing is ideal it is perfect i have no regrets on it uh whatsoever i would purchase it again in a heartbeat shouts out to ben lang and everybody at lang for making an amazing cooker and uh like i said three years in and this thing has not disappointed me whatsoever. If you guys have any questions, put the questions down below and I will try to answer them in a timely manner. So yeah, shouts out to Lang and thanks to everybody for watching. Peace.